Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard the Cape May Whale Watcher. Here with Captain Jeff. Good morning, Captain Jeff. Good morning. We are getting underway on our 10 a.m. virtual whale and dolphin watch. I am your quarantine captain. So you have Captain Jeff aboard today, Captain Stewart's at the wheel. We are currently cruising Cape May Harbor. I think this is our fifth trip we're out on for you guys. We have a beautiful day, and we are looking forward to finding some dolphins, maybe some whale, and see what else we can see. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy the cruise. Absolutely gorgeous day on Cape May Harbor. You've now entered Cape May's Harbor, Cold Spring Harbor. The entire harbor is man-made, constructed between the years 1900 and 1908. It was dredged out from over 500 acres of salt marsh, the spoils of which were used to backfill East Cape May. We had a request before about the view from the pilot house. This is our view from the pilot house. Good morning, Alexis. Good morning, Whitney. Good morning, Leanne. Nice to see you all tuning in. We have a special treat today. We are aboard our main boat, the Cape May Whale Watcher. She's a special boat, 110 feet in length. A capacity of 400 passengers. Lots and lots and lots of space. Good morning, Mrs. Stewart. Nice to see you tuning in. And mom. Show our beautiful floor we just put in. Captain Stewart wants to show off we got our new flooring put into the pilot house here. Captain Scott took care of that. Captain Bob. We're out for sanity, right? Is that our own sanity? The sanity of our, our patrons? For everyone. Us included in that. Besides, how could we pass up a day like this? Good morning, Lori. Sorry you couldn't be aboard today. This is the closest we're going to get today for having you aboard, so happy you could make it. White building with the gray roof off to your right here. That's the Corinthian Yacht Club. That's our local sailing organization here in Cape May. It's also one of the oldest yacht clubs in the United States. Morning, Stephanie. Thanks for tuning in from New York. Morning, Phyllis. Nice to see you tuning in. Morning, Michael from Staten Island. Nice to see you. Now cruising on Cape May Harbor. For those of you just tuning in, we've got an absolutely beautiful day to be out. Now coming up on our right, this is Group Cape May Coast Guard Base and Training Center. This is the only training center in the United States for the Coast Guard. Morning, Charles. If somebody you know joins up with the Coast Guard from anywhere in the U.S., 
They are coming to Cape May, New Jersey for their eight weeks of basic training as a new recruit. They process 3,000 to 5,000 new recruits every year. The United States Coast Guard base is one of the reasons that Cape May County is a Coast Guard community, one of only four in the United States. Morning, Beth from Pendale, Pendale, PA. Nice to have you aboard. The largest white vessels on the right side here at the end of the wharf. You've got the Lawrence Lawson and the Angela McShan. These are both 155 foot medium endurance offshore Coast Guard cutters. They are part of a brand new class of cutter here in the United States Coast Guard. Capable of speeds of 28 knots. They are used for fisheries management and search and rescue. Hi, Megan from Baltimore. Nice to have you aboard. All right, naturalist Kristen just tuned in. Hi, Kristen. Nice to have you aboard. You got the big boat out today. Lots of space at the rail. Kenneth from Bristol, PA. Nice to have you aboard. Patricia from Miami. Nice to have you aboard. Your board too, Bill. Can't wait for you. Can be aboard live. Can't. That goes for everybody. Can't wait till these restrictions are lifted and we can all get out here, see each other again. We've actually recently been looped in on a Cape May County task force, which is providing guidance for all businesses uh, to the state on what the regulations will be for, so that we can all get back out here. Since we have the capacity for around a thousand passengers between our three vessels, they felt it was necessary to include us in these talks. And I'm very happy that the County Department of Tourism has taken the initiative and reached out to us. Morning, Andrew from Phoenixville, PA. Got an Osprey here, right side on day marker seven.
How's that? Can everybody still hear me? Morning, Whitney. Can you hear us? Excellent. Try to get you a little more stabilized view here. A section of land on our right. This is known as Sewell's Point. It was named Sewell's Point when William J. Sewell built his fish house restaurant here back in 1868. He actually had a horse-drawn trolley line that connected Sewell's Point with downtown Cape May. So we had a lot of space on the boat today. Thanks guys, I'm glad you can hear me. Back behind us on the right, that's the two mile bridge. This bridge connects Cape May with Wildwood Crest via Ocean Drive, and it's $1.50 to go over. Cape May Inlet, Cold Spring Inlet. The entire inlet is man-made, constructed between the years 1900 and 1908. The two long rock jetties extend out into the ocean, 4,600 feet and or three quarters of a mile. It's one of the safest inlets on the East Coast, and we're fortunate to have it here. As we're heading out through the inlet, please remember if you're standing up to hold on, even if you're in your living room. Pretty nice day today though, folks. Morning, Karen. Nice to see you could join us. Happy to have you aboard. Can't wait till you and the family can get back out here. Can't wait to meet your new boy. on your right side here. You'll notice we're just up to the beachfront in Cape May. Over on the left side of the boat. Wildwood Beachfront, still another quarter mile out. Now, when these two long rock jetties were constructed here 110 years ago, the beaches, well, they were dead level with each other. So what happened? Well, sand has a natural progression to move from north to south. So over the years, all the sands piled up over here on the Wildwood side. Cape May, on the other hand, has suffered massive beach erosion. The federal government accepting responsibility for this catastrophe in Cape May. They've allotted over $50 million for beach replenishment in Cape May over the next 50 years. Again, looking like a beautiful day to be out here. Hi from Holland, Netherlands. Carla, happy to have you aboard. to have you aboard again if you're just tuning in we are working our way out the Cape May Inlet we have an absolutely beautiful day this is our fifth installment of virtual whale watching dolphin watching sightseeing happy to have everybody aboard today Cannot wait till we can have you aboard in 
actuality here. We got some dolphins already. They are coming right out of the surf. If you saw them there on the far side of the jetty, we just had a couple in really super tight. A nice view of the island. And a Wildwood off to our left. First up, Diamond Beach, then Wildwood Crest, Wildwood, and North Wildwood. Good way to not get seasick. I don't think I'll get seasick here. And you have now entered the Atlantic Ocean. Once again, if you're standing up, even if you're in your living room, you may want to hold on here, folks. And we are officially on Marine Mammal Search. Keep your eyes peeled. We like to start off our whale and dolphin watching trips. We're looking for bottlenose dolphins first. They can grow to be seven to 10 feet in length. They can weigh up to 1,000 pounds. They are gray in color. They are marine mammals. They've got to surface to breathe air. They breathe air like we do. If you spot them, point them out to us. Put it in the comments. We spot them, we're gonna point them out to you. Cape May County is the northernmost calving ground, birthing grounds for bottlenose dolphins every year. Around 3,000 dolphins swim north of these waters. Last year, around, three, around 700 called Cape May their summer home. Out of this, we witnessed right around 120 newborn calves being given birth. Back behind us on the left, that's the island of Cape May. And we are working our way up the Diamond Beach here. Beautiful section of wildwood here. Wildlife refuge down the southern end here. Well, western end, really. weather for you. We had a dolphin in there, tight, and we are searching. No whale reports so far today, but I'll be checking back in with the captain here pretty soon to see if he's heard anything. Perfect day to be out here. Our last trip out was pretty cold and bitter, gray and overcast. Today's beautiful and sunny. A right springtime day. Get across the boat here, say the ocean side here. Perfect day. Just tuning in, you're aboard the Cape May Whale Watcher. We've got a few of these virtual whale watchers aboard our private boat, the, the Water Lily. We had an engine test we needed to run today, so we thought we'd take the, the big boat out. She is 110 feet long. She's two decks. The vessel seats 200 passengers on its upper deck, 200 passengers on its lower deck, a total capacity of 400 people. Once we are able to get you out here, even at a reduced capacity, we will still have lots of space. We have the most space of any tour boats in Cape May, certainly any tour boats in the county here. And we can't wait till we can get you back out here on a non-virtual whale watch, the real thing. Hi, Mary Quick, I see you're tuning in there. Happy to have you aboard. I saw Leanne earlier tuned in. Hope Jeffrey.
Jeffrey and Lily are able to watch. Coming flood tide here, or down in the tide a little bit. There's Flipper, left side. Small group. Give me a chance, I'll be back up. Rule number one, whale and dolphin watching. Whatever goes down has got to come up. Back behind us, left side, just had a couple more. Going behind us. Now when the dolphins are down for an extended period of time, what do you think they're doing? They're feeding, they're chasing fish. Have a little sushi for breakfast. Dolphins are expert fishermen. They don't miss a trick. They live, hunt, and work all within a cooperative community. They utilize cooperative hunting techniques to gather their fish. Right behind us here, just starting to surface. Captain Stewart's rotating the boat for us here. Air slipper. Keep your eyes peeled for calves, ladies and gentlemen. It is calving season. It's well underway here. What are calves? What are you looking for? Calves are baby dolphins, so you're looking for a baby dolphin swimming right tight to mama's side. They're usually around 18 to 24 inches in length. They can be darker in coloration than the other dolphins. If they were born in the last 24 hours, the calves will be jet black in coloration. They'll have small folds or creases in their sides called fetal folds, and their dorsal fin may or may not be bent over to one side. The calves get this way from living within the fetal cavity for the past 12 months. That's right, ladies, it's 12 months for dolphins, not nine, 12. Small pot here working off to the left. There's a group working up the beach now. I'm in full circle here. Now, when a female dolphin goes to give birth for the first time, she swims back to the matriarchal pod from which she was born. So in most cases, her mother's there, her grandmother's there, in some rare cases, even her great-grandmother. You see, we've been able to prove lineage between the dolphins from generation to generation. We've got another group just popped on the right here. So we got two groups 
right and left side. Working back up to this pod on our left up ahead here. surface closer in the bow there. More to the right. It's not a real big group. They're staying down feeding here. What kind of fish do you think they're chasing? This time of year, we do have an abundance of menhaden or bunker here in the water. They're around three to nine inches in length, silver in color. It's kind of a base fish. Lots of things eat the bunker. Very important in the food chain out here. But the dolphins, they're towards the top of the food chain. They eat all kinds of fish. They chase striped bass. They'll eat flounder. They eat bluefish. They eat wheat fish. Small crabs, you name it, it's on the menu for the dolphins line of them here working up the beach just had a few more pop on our right up ahead and we're just off the beach here in Wildwood we have a nice pot of dolphins Looks like there's more as we work up the beach here. A couple of surfacing back behind us on the right here. Following along, working off the beach a little now. Another group up ahead on our left, Captain says. work up to this next pod here. Absolutely beautiful, calm day out here today. Uh, we'd love to be out here every day on a virtual whale watch for you guys. We'd really love to be out here on a regular whale watch. This time of year, we're getting into the time of season where we go every day. wait till that happens here folks. In the meantime, we have this. As I started to say, we've been picking our days, picking the calm days. A little easier to video for you here. Working our way up the beach. I think we've already passed by a couple different pods here. your eyes peeled. You see a group? Put it in the comments here. Here's a group left side up ahead. Stewart's slowing down. My guess is we got some more up ahead of us here. Let's uh, turn around here. Let's see what we got. 
Let's look up the beach there. Do we see many seals sunbathing? I have not seen any yet this year myself. Uh, however, I know there have been quite a few seals. It's a popular question, especially this time of year. I know the Marine Mammal Stranding Center up in Brigantine, New Jersey. They are the only stranding center here, and they cover the entire state of New Jersey, the entire coastline, and up into New York, even down off into Delaware in some cases. They've had many seals this year, and under these strange circumstances, it has been daunting for them. It's a worthy cause if you check out the Marine Mammal Stranding Center. I know they could use all the support they can get. They're doing a lot of good for a lot of different sick seals. All right. There's our dolphins. There's a couple back behind us here. Morning, Debbie. Thanks for tuning in. If you're just tuning in, folks, we are here on the Wildwood Beachfront. We are out aboard the 110 foot long Cape May Whale Watcher on an absolutely beautiful day here on the ocean. We have been doing these virtual whale washes throughout this quarantine period. I'm Captain Jeff, your quarantine captain. Out here with Captain Stewart. back up back down the beachfront now got wildwood crest back behind us here had a couple little groups of dolphins no big group just yet we have an incoming tide and we really most of these trips we have ran this year so far we've been out on ebb tides outgoing tide and without any other boats out here to give us a report it's up to us to find them had several different whale, whale reports this year. We've been unsuccessful finding them on these trips so far. We've only been out five times so far for the season and our efforts have mainly been concentrated on finding dolphins and getting you guys um, the best experience we can here. However, the ferry keeps reporting up to three humpback whales in Delaware Bay. So if we had the time to be out here on our normal schedule, where we're out here three trips a day, seven days a week, we have a much better shot at finding them for you. Morning, Fran. Thanks for tuning in. Happy to have you aboard for our virtual whale watch today. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're working our way uh, down the Wildwood Beach front here, passing Diamond Beach working down towards Cape May. Hello, 
Whitney from Myron Powell School. Happy to have you aboard. Gonna do our best to find you some more marine mammals here. Meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy the cruise. It's a day worth enjoying, folks. I wish you were here. Water temperature does have an effect on the dolphins for sure. Typically our dolphins show up here around the middle of April. They stay with us throughout the spring, summer, and fall. They leave here around the middle of December. Now the dolphins do this because they like the water temperature 50 degrees or warmer. Our water temperature right now is hovering right around that 50 degree Ice mark. Group up ahead on the right, head towards Cape Sounds like the boss found us something here, folks. Let's head towards the bow and check it out. Wonder if it's possible to use a drone to help spot whales and dolphins. Uh, yes, it is possible. However, whales and dolphins, all the whales and dolphins, they are all protected by the Marine Mammal Protection Act. One thing you always want to remember, the Marine Mammal Protection Act, along with taking of whales and dolphins, does not allow for harassment of whales and dolphins. There are rules and guidelines for watching whales and dolphins safely. These can be found at whalesense.org. We are a whale sense participant. We follow and we stick to the Atlantic region guidelines for whale watching at all times. One of those guidelines, you cannot get a drone within a thousand feet of a whale. They will stress the whale out, folks, so keep that in mind for any of our drone pilots that are tuning in. They are cool, and the view is amazing. However, we don't want to stress them out. Got a group of dolphins up ahead. Right side here around our one o'clock. I'll take you to the bow here. So they just went down up ahead. We'll be up and running in August for sure, folks. We, this group is moving. We got a group off to our left, another group off the bow here. Nice pot of dolphins. And they're working their way to Cape May. In a hurry. Dolphins are members of the order Cetacea. This term Cetacean refers to a group of 90 different marine mammals. They're broken up into two suborders, toothed whales and baleen whales. Bottlenose dolphins, they are toothed whales. They're grouped in with other toothed whales. That includes other dolphins, porpoise, orcas, pilot whales, belugas. Oh, right in front of the boat. I missed it. There they are. Larger whales like humpback whales, fin whales, blue whales, right whales. Those are baleen whales, which do not have teeth. In lieu of teeth, they have baleen in the roof of their mouth. They use the baleen like a big filter. They filter their food out of the seawater they take in, and then they swallow it whole. Nice group up ahead here. Chasing fish. There's more out ahead of them. chance I'll be back up. We've worked our way back down to Cape May Inlet here. The inlet is an excellent fishing area. Fishermen know it, so do the dolphins. That's probably why they're down here.
starting to surf his left side up ahead here. Beautiful group. All right. When did the dolphins first start showing up around the area? We start to see them usually in April. I've seen them as early as March. Sometimes you even see them in the winter. It depends on what kind of a winter is. Winter it is. This year was fairly mild, so I imagine the dolphins, a few of them at least, were around. This group's starting to work off to our left. If you're just tuning in, folks, you are aboard the Cape May Whale Watcher at 110 feet in length with the capacity for 400 passengers. We're out on one of our virtual whale and dolphin watching trips. We're just outside Cape May Inlet here on an absolutely beautiful spring day here in Cape May. We wish you were here. However, for the time being, this is how we can get you out here. And we are happy to have you tuning in and joining us aboard ship here. Got a beautiful pot of dolphins working their way, chasing fish here, just outside Cape May Inlet. Let's see where they pop back up. My guess is they're gonna swim underneath of us and surface behind us. Stand by. down right now underneath of us up oh, servicing right side straight out three o'clock in a hurry heading for Cape May right side cap Now, have you ever thought about how a dolphin sleeps, ladies and gentlemen? I bet you haven't. It's pretty important. Think about a sleeping dolphin in these terms, if you will. Dolphins, they're marine mammals. They got a surface to breathe air. They breathe air like we do. Well, we can't lay down on the ocean floor and take a nap, right? Neither can the dolphins. Now, for years, scientists had studied other cetacean species, like humpback whales, and they had witnessed them doing something called logging when they were tired. Logging, like it sounds, is a pretty simple process for a humpback whale. They float up on the surface just enough so that their back's exposed to the air every now and then. They take a breath of fresh air. Now, humpback whales can do this because they're comprised of a lot of blubber. Blubber is a fatty tissue, and we all know fat floats. Dolphins, on the other hand, dolphins are comprised of more muscle tissue. Dolphins are more dense than water. If they stopped swimming, they'd sink and drown. Hard to believe for one of nature's best swimmers and it puzzled scientists for years. How do the dolphins get their rest? Finally, a Russian scientist had two dolphins in captivity. He hooked them up to a brainwave machine and he solved the mystery. He discovered dolphins have the ability to isolate either hemisphere of their brain throughout any given part of the day. So, throughout one part of the day, the dolphins are swimming on the left hemisphere of their brain only. The right hemisphere, it's turned off or sleeping. Throughout another part of the day, they're swimming on the right hemisphere of their brain only, left side up ahead. And the left hemisphere is turned off or sleeping. And throughout more rigorous activities like feeding and or mating, dolphins are operating on both left and right hemispheres at the same time. Unlike man, we all know when it comes to mating, man's gonna be operating on no hemispheres of the brain. Brings up another interesting topic with the dolphins. How about their mating behavior? Did you know that dolphins are some of the most sexually active creatures on the planet? Unlike other animals that only mate when the females in heat, dolphins mate 365 days of the year. They mate for fun and recreation. Some male dolphins, believe it or not, they've been known to mate five to seven times per day. 
You gotta love those dolphins. It's a whole new spin on that theory about coming back as a bird in the next life. We've got two pods up ahead of us here. These pods are not mating. These pods are chasing fish. Looks like they may have caught up to them because they've slowed down now considerably from when we first found them. Again, if you're just tuning in, you are aboard the 110 foot long Cape May Whale Watcher. We are just outside of Cape May Inlet and we've got a beautiful pot of dolphins here. As long as I can figure out how to operate the camera here, I can keep you focused in here. I just saw another pod surface beyond this pod. Hi, Oksana. Nice to see you tuning in. Welcome aboard. Starting to surface on our right up ahead. Another group off to the right further and another group beyond this outside of us here, folks. So you've got three different pods now here, just outside Cape May Inlet. Beautiful group, right side up ahead. Thanks for tuning in from Boca Raton there. Oksana, we miss you too. We miss the whole crew. We can't wait to have you all back aboard. For now, we have virtual whale and dolphin watching. Nice to be out on this absolutely beautiful day here off of Cape May. pod offshore of us here. Look around, you see him, point him out, folks. I just saw Reno go through the uh, comments there. Happy to have you aboard, Reno. I miss you all, guys. Got the one pod going back behind us, heading for Cape May. And the pod offshore, I think, may have been traveling too fast for us. They may have already passed us by. Everybody's working towards Cape May Point here. How am I going to see you point them out? You put it in the comments, just like you just posted that. It is a beautiful day out here. We'll work back to this pod here, folks. Take one more pass. Check them out here. They're back behind us on the right here. towards us up ahead, right side here. You look closely up on the dorsal fins of the tail flukes of some of the dolphins. You may see what looks like a piece of seaweed hanging off of them. It's not seaweed, it's a small crustacean of growth, and it's called stalked barnacles, or xeno. It's something the dolphins normally pick up when they're in warmer waters, such as offshore here off of Cape May or down south for the winter. It usually falls off after they've been here for around a month. Many of the transient dolphins that we see in the larger offshore pods, like the movie I was posting yesterday, if you're on our Facebook page, after this you can check that out. That's a super pod of around 250 dolphins that we saw offshore. That particular video is from back in 2016, but it's a pretty common occurrence to get the very large pods, up to 500 in a pod, working together, feeding offshore Cape May. And many of those transient dolphins will have that xeno, or stalked barnacles.
just offshore of Cape May, outside the inlet here. We've got a pod of dolphins. If you're just tuning in, you're aboard the Cape May Whale Watcher here at 110 feet in length with a capacity of 400 passengers. Of all the boats in New Jersey, we are perfectly suited if and when these regulations come through. If we want to reduce capacity, we'll reduce capacity and we can still get anybody who wants to go whale watching out on the water here for a beautiful day just like this. So there's that other pod of dolphins just popped on our left side here. I think we're going to wrap up on this pod. Coming towards us on the left, up ahead. If you're looking in the distance there, there's another pod a couple hundred yards outside this group. Surfacing up ahead here. There's Flipper. Now we've told you lots of information about the dolphins in a short period of time this morning. I don't expect you to remember everything I've told you. If you can remember one thing, remember this. Where are we? <laughs> well, you guys are at home, I hope. That's where you're supposed to be. Thank you for doing it. Stay home, stay safe. Where are the dolphins? They're in their home too. They're out here. They're in the wild. They're free. Dolphins like this in the wild, they can live 45 to 50 years out here. Now the dolphins you see out in captivity, like in a marine mammal park show, they're not so lucky. Typically, for every one dolphin you see out in captivity, there's been three dolphins captured. First two dolphins, unfortunately, die in the first 90 days of capture. That last one, lucky dolphin you get to see in a show, only lives to the ripe old age of around five, and that's it. So what are we getting at? Doesn't matter whether you're aboard this boat, this virtual whale watch, somebody else's boat. What really matters, the well-being of the dolphins. This is where they belong, living out their lives the way the Creator intended them to live. Not swimming around in a little concrete tank in endless circles where they go blind from swimming in chlorinated water and die off from other eye-related diseases. No way, gang. You want to see them? You want to see them out here. Dolphins do not do well in captivity. It's a proven fact. Anybody aboard ever heard of a TV series from the 60s and 70s called Flipper? How many dolphins do you think starred as Flipper? About five. Now, Flipper's trainer was a man by the name of Richard O'Berry. Rick O'Berry went from being the foremost dolphin trainer in the nation to becoming the most outspoken advocate of freedom for all dolphins all over the world. He's still very active today. If you want to know what Rick O'Berry's been up to, Check out his website, Dolphin Project. I'm gonna wrap up with this pod, I think, here. See where Captain Stewart takes us next. I don't have to tell you that he's a man of his own will. He might take us around the island, he might take us back in the inlet here. Either way, we're out. We love doing this for you folks. We love having the opportunity to provide a virtual whale watch experience to you. It's a little selfish folks. We're out here. We're also doing this for us, for our own sanity here. Thanks, Oksana. There's the link to dolphinproject.com. Starting to surface, left side up ahead. It's a whole line of them here. Beautiful day on the ocean. Does not get any better. Again, I wish you were all over here. Cannot wait till you can be. We've got a couple gannets flying overhead here. We have throughout the spring here on these virtual whale launches. We've had a lot of whale reports, mostly from the Cape May Lewis Ferry from the mouth of Delaware Bay. We'll check in with Captain Stewart, see what he wants to do with the rest of our time here. What are you thinking, boss? It's fine with me. Got any, you got any reports? No. 
Let's go around. We certainly had the weather. Oh, I've been watching it, yeah. Yeah, there's there's quite a few out here. It's good to know. We really haven't been out here on the incoming tide, so. If they're starting to form up out here in these bigger pods, it's, that's great. All right, folks. I think we're gonna take you around the island here as we pull away from this pod of dolphins. It's always good luck to wave goodbye to Flipper. Be here next time you come to see him at the shore. We may find some more as we travel here, folks. Here we go. back behind us. I don't think anybody's doing any surfing today, but I figured I'd walk back and take a look anyway. Sometimes the dolphins pop up and do some body surfing and the waves that follow the boat, that's the boat's wake. They are better at it than you or I. So far this trip we've only had dolphins. Uh, we've had a lot of reports of whale activity in the area. We have not been able to get to it successfully and of course today it's a beautiful day. We're out and we have no reports to go on. So we are gonna get you around the island of Cape May here. And we're gonna see what we can see, show you some Cape May, with whatever batteries left on here. And if we get a report, we're gonna to run to it. Just like normal, folks. Every day, every trip, it's different. It's particularly different lately, I have to admit. But great that we have this day. We're out here. Beautiful ocean. It's awesome we have this technology that we can get you out here on a virtual whale and dolphin watch. Day today, ladies and gentlemen, we are working our way inshore. We're, we're off of the Cape May Inlet there, and we're working our way in towards Cape May. If you're just joining us, you are aboard the 110 foot long Cape May Whale Watcher uh, for our fifth installment of our virtual whale and dolphin watching trips. I'm Captain Jeff, your quarantine captain. Great to have you all aboard. Get back up to the bow here if I can. Got a little windage here. Just offshore at Cape May. my best with the camera here folks that's Cape May Inlet back behind us on the right there and up ahead of us the island of Cape May the city of Cape May now Cape May is a very historic city dating back to the whaling days and beyond it originally was a two-day journey down to Cape May from the then capital city of Philadelphia the first day down as far as May's Landing the second day down to Cape May by Stagecoach. Today, the entire city of Cape May, it's a national historic landmark for its unique collection of Victorian homes and hotels. It's great to have everybody aboard today. Again, we're just offshore of Cape May, working our way back in. 
not even a mile off the beach. You guys should board the 110 foot long Cape May Whale Watcher. The section of Cape May and Shore is currently, this is East Cape May. Back in 1903, a group of investors from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, they purchased all this land on our right for the small sum of $200,000 in an attempt to build an all new Cape May calling themselves the East Cape May Development Corporation. In the end, fewer than 100 homes were built. The large seaside cottages at this eastern end of Cape May, they stand as a lasting testimony to their efforts. A little bit of windage today. White building with the white pillars there. Four white oversized pillars, that's the Peter Shields Inn. One of the most pretentious homes built along the beachfront here in Cape May. It was built in 1907 for the president of the East Cape May Development Corporation. The last home they built before they went bankrupt. Let's see if we can get out of the wind here. There we go. And there's the Peter Shields. Now, you know, as popular as Cape May is today, and as popular as it was during Victorian times, then being known as the queen of the seaside summer resorts, it fell into quite a bit of a funk, if you will, around the turn of the century, 1900. At that time, Cape May was just a town of old homes, certainly no reason for a tourist to come down here and visit. And it took a natural catastrophe to snap Cape May out of its doldrums. That being the great nor'easter of 1962, the storm destroyed the seawall protecting the town, flooded the town, and destroyed several of the old Victorian homes. At this time, a lot of land developers came to Cape May. They wanted to tear down the Victorians and put up new modern structures and hotels. At this point, a grassroots movement took hold in Cape May, known as MAC. MAC is an acronym for the Mid-Atlantic Center for the Arts and Humanities. They fought to preserve the history of Cape May, and their first battle was fought over the Emlyn Physic Estate which now serves as their headquarters and museum in downtown Cape May. Mac is mostly responsible for the Victorian Cape May we all get to enjoy today. In fact, Mac has a new name. It's now Cape May Mac. Working our way down the beachfront here in Cape May. Coming up on the Grand. Got the La Mer down the beach there. next group of homes coming up. I got the Montreal right side. Next group of homes for the next several city blocks. These are all classic examples of Victorian architecture at its finest. All of these homes, they were built between the 1860s and the 1870s. They are capped off by the white building with the red roof, the red awning, and the American flag up top. That's the Sea Mist Inn. Arguably one of the most photographed homes on the Cape May beachfront. white building with the green roofs, large window in the back of it. That's Cape May's Convention Hall. It's the third convention hall to be built here. The first two, they were lost to the sea. Nice look up the beach towards the inlet there. And we're working our way down 
Beach towards Cape May Lighthouse. Coming up next along the beachfront here. Large yellow hotel with white pillars and a gray roof. This is Congress Hall. It's the third Congress Hall to be built here. The first two, they were lost to fires. The second, the Great November Fire of 1878. That same fire destroyed over 30 acres of downtown Cape May. Third and present day Congress Hall was constructed in the year 1879. It's L-shaped for maximum ocean views. It features a wraparound porch and white pillars, both trademarks of the Victorian hotels of its day. In 1882, Congress Hall was the site of seven evening concerts held by John Philip Sousa and the Marine Band. It is said that on opening night, over 3,000 people gathered on the front lawn at Congress Hall. Here is a rendition of the Congress Hall March, a piece that he had composed just for the event. We're on our way down beach here. Almost down to the cove now the 2nd Street Jetty. A favorite for some for watching the, the sunsets throughout the summer and the winter for that matter. In the comments here, Karen, yes, Congress Hall did have a little bit of damage. Uh, they've got it all fixed up. They had it fixed up in, a, in a, about a day or two, I believe. And they are ready to open Along with the rest of Cape May, we are all ready to open, just as we normally would be this time of year. The boats, the hotels, the restaurants, we are all quite ready. Any little bit of damage we had from that little bit of windstorm we had, it's all been fixed. We are ready to open, and we are ready to see you all when we're allowed to. area that we're passing through right now this is known as South Cape May believe it or not right now you're sailing over top of an old village known as South Cape May some of the streets and the foundations of some of the old homes are still directly beneath us this area was originally marketed to the african-american community one land developer attempting to attract attention to this area put up a wooden and tin side elephant here it was a lot like Lucy up in Margate, however, it was called the Light of Asia. It was put up in 1885, it was torn down just 15 years later. In addition to all the history that Cape May has, history from Victorian times, history from colonial times, there's a, a new museum just opened up in Cape May. Well, it would be open if we were allowed to be open. Uh, dedicated towards Harriet Tubman and her time spent in Cape May and her links with the Underground Railroad and the importance of Cape May. Very much looking forward to that opening and being able to go check it out. I think it's going to tie in somewhat with South Cape May and other parts of Cape May here. So, very excited about that this year. Stephanie, I'm ready for the beach too. <laughs> I don't get to the beach too often, being aboard the boat, three trips a day. However, I'm ready for it to be open, even if I just get to go for a walk, and I bet a lot of you are with me on that one. One last look up the beach here as we're working our way around to the lighthouse. What's the best time to go on a sightseeing trip? Once we're open, we sail three trips a day. We go at 10 o'clock for a two hour dolphin watch and history cruise around the island, which is basically the trip you're aboard right now. We also go at one o'clock every day for a three hour whale and dolphin watch. Sometimes we go around the island, sometimes we're 20 miles offshore. And then every day 
we go at 6.30 up until September, then we go at 5.30 for a two-hour dolphin watch and sunset cruise that includes complimentary pizza and hot dogs. So three opportunities per day to get out with us on a sightseeing cruise, whale watching cruise. We also have other additional trips like lighthouse cruises, wine tastings, and that's all at capemaywhalewatcher.com. I don't want to bore you with that. Thanks, Pat, for putting up grand opening for the Harriet Tubman Museum. It's supposed to be June 29th. June 19th, not June 29th. Okay, got it. Well, there you go. If you're interested in the museum, it's going to be opening mid-June here, the 19th of June. We've got more dolphins just popped on our right here. We're working our way to Cape May Point. A large concrete structure on our right here. This is a World War II gun emplacement and bunker. This originally housed two 155 millimeter seacoast artillery guns and they had a 12 mile range. It's actually part of a larger military installa installation located over in Cape and Lopin State Park called Fort Miles. If you're ever over in Delaware on the far side of the bay there, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, this is, this pales in comparison. More important than what this is, when and where it was built. It was built in 1942, 900 feet back from the nearest water's edge and completely underground. All the sand you see around the bunker at this point, it's all artificial, been pumped in there over the last two decades here. Got some more dolphins go down. We've worked our way down to Cape May Point here. We've got the lighthouse. some dolphins going up the beach here. You're now at Cape May Point, the southernmost tip of the state of New Jersey. Any further south, you will get wet. Ten miles out on our left, lose Delaware. Up ahead of us here, Cape May Lighthouse. It's the third lighthouse to be built here. The first two, they were lost to the sea, the third and present day lighthouse was constructed in the year 1859. It is 157 and a half feet tall, 199 steps up to the top, where it houses a 350,000 candle power light visible at sea, 19 miles on a clear night. MAC, the Mid-Atlantic Center for the Arts and Humanities, now known as Cape May MAC, has received over $2 million in grant money to restore the lighthouse to its original sandstone color and do massive renovations to the lantern section in the oil house. Recently, it got a brand new coat of paint. She's looking great. For a small donation to Mac, you can make the climb up to the top for a beautiful panoramic view of Cape May Point and the surrounding waters. I had a pot of dolphins here believe it was a small pod and they're still working their way up the beach here. Oh, wrong way. Right way. Yeah, they are. Right side. Small group. I bet you we'll have some more as we continue around the island here. This area that we're in here, this is known as the Rips. It's where the Delaware Bay meets the Atlantic Ocean. The rips are caused by hills of sand or shoals on the ocean floor beneath us. These shoals cause moving water to shoot up vertically towards the surface, causing the lines and waves to appear. It also makes for a great fishing area. We often will find dolphins down in this area. Coming up next to the lighthouse here. white building with a red roof. This is St. Mary's by the Sea. It's now a sister's summer retreat, home to the Sisters of St. Joseph. However, it was built as the Shoreham Hotel back in 1890 by John Wanamaker and then sold to the Sisters in 1909 for the small sum of $9,000. You got to hand it to them. They know their real estate. It's one of the few places on the East Coast where you can see the sun rise over the Atlantic Ocean and set over the Delaware Bay.
last look. The stern of the boat is still in the Atlantic Ocean here. That's Cape May City up the beach there. The bow of the boat, we've worked our way around the point here, and the bow of the boat has now entered the Delaware Bay. If we were to continue north, heading up the bay on the course we're on right now, eventually we'd have you up in the Delaware River, and we would be up in Philadelphia in about 80 miles from here. I think I saw Aunt Michelle tuned in there. Nice to have you aboard, Aunt Michelle. through the rips once again if you're standing up even if you're in your living room please be holding on or have a seat community and shore on our right this is known as the borough of Cape May Point however it wasn't always this way it was actually founded by Philadelphia's very own department store magnet John Wanamaker as a Presbyterian religious retreat known as the borough of Seagrove it remained the borough of Seagrove for only five years and then it was changed over to the more popular borough of Cape May Point. Working our way around the Cape here. Cape May Lighthouse back behind us. Concrete ship is coming up. Captain Scott's tuning in. Hi, Scotty. Concrete cylindrical tower. That's a World War II fire control tower. This was used during World War II primarily for spotting German U-boats, and there were quite a few to be seen. Also on our right up ahead, this is Sunset Beach. Every evening in season, we have a sunset flag lowering ceremony here, a different flag every evening for a different fallen veteran. Sunset Beach is also an excellent spot to pick up Cape May Diamonds. Cape May Diamonds are a smallish stone which can be heat treated, polished, and made up into costume jewelry. If you look closely today, we do not have anybody picking them up because the beach is closed for now. We've got a couple folks in there thinking about it though. And on our right, the famous wreck of the concrete ship, the Atlantis. The Atlantis was 210 feet in length, commissioned back in June 1919. She was part of an experimental project during World War I to build ships out of concrete instead of steel due to a shortage of steel. She made several transatlantic crossings as a cargo ship. After being decommissioned, she was being brought here to be used as part of a ferry breakwater system. However, during a storm, she broke loose from her tow line, ran aground here, cracked in half. The Atlantis has been there ever since, once again constructed entirely of concrete reinforced with steel rods and apparently the captains decided to do some loop-de-loops here I don't know again if you're just tuning in with us I'm Captain Jeff your quarantine captain I'm also out with Captain Stewart today he's at the wheel so I'm not responsible We're aboard the 110 foot long Cape May Whale Watcher with a capacity of 400 passengers. We are out with him and I. On a virtual whale watch, our fifth installment here, taking you around the island of Cape May on a beautiful Tuesday morning here. We're now out on Delaware Bay. We started out in the Atlantic Ocean. We've worked our way around to the bay. And I think the boss is taking a look in the area that there has been quite a bit of humpback whale activity. 
my last checking in with him. We don't have any reports today, but hey, we're out. Let's check it out. You don't know unless you go. And we cannot wait till you all can go. And looking back at Sunset Beach. And we are working out into the middle of the bay towards the ferry lanes here where the whales have been sighted. Uncle Jeff, nice to see you tuning in there. Happy to have you aboard. much longer my battery's gonna hold out here folks. Real We've essentially got you around the island here ladies and gentlemen. Where are we docked at? That's a great question. We are docked in the same exact location where we have been since 1993 when my father started our business. Our exact address is 1218 Wilson Drive, Cape May, New Jersey, 08204. We are one block off the main road on the way into Cape May. It's where we have been. It's where we always will be. We own our location. We don't rent. And we look forward to having you all back aboard this year. Hello from South Brunswick, Rita. Nice to have you aboard. If you're just tuning in, you're aboard the Cape May Whale Watcher. We've just gone around the island of Cape May. We'll be posting this to our page after we wrap up the live session here. So if you just tuned in, you can pick us up from the beginning there and go around the island. We had several beautiful pods of dolphins off of Cape May Inlet. We had a couple more at Cape May Point, even a few off of Wildwood. We're out in the ferry lanes here, out in Delaware Bay, where there has been a humpback whale reported. Over the last few weeks, we have no reports today, but we thought we'd come out here and take a look. Again, if you folks have any questions as we go along here, and if I don't get to them in the comments section, I will be answering them post-trip and answer all of your questions to the best of my ability. towards North Cape May and Town Bank, what's left of the old whaling village here in Cape May, and then the villas up the beach there on the Delaware Bay side of the Cape May Peninsula. Hi from Newfoundland, Canada. Denise, happy to have you aboard. Has the lack of boats changed the marine life in any way? Absolutely, it's probably better for them to some degree. There's less noise out here, folks. Humpback whales, bottlenose dolphins, they're all acoustic animals. Their life revolves around sound out here. It's how they find their prey. It's how they communicate back and forth with each other. They're also highly adaptable. They're adapted to having some of the noise out here the sound of the engines, the sound of other boats, boat traffic, so they probably want to know what's up too. But in general, I would say they're happy having the ocean more to themselves than usual. I don't know. I can't talk to them. I am in the bay, yes, or you are in the bay with us here. This is Delaware Bay, 
We're working our way off of Cape May Point. There's the point back behind us. And Cape May Lighthouse. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've enjoyed having you all aboard today. The battery on this is dying. I think what I'm gonna do is we're going to uh, cut our trip short here. If we do find something along the way here, we're gonna charge the phone back up and we will get you back live. If not, once again, I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the crew of the Cape May Whale Watcher, myself, and the entire Stewart family to thank all of you and searching with us here this morning. We hope that you enjoyed your trip and that you tell all your friends about us. As we are the largest boats in the state of New Jersey, the fastest and the only boats to guarantee marine mammal sightings, such as our dolphin friends today. So that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Very happy to have you all aboard. In the meantime, until it's safe, stay home, stay safe, and we'll all get through this storm together. I'm Captain Jeff, your quarantine captain. Have a great rest of the day. Can't wait to see you all.